to season three, episode two of Kitty Cat Go Live, where we discuss various topics related to traveling and adventuring with your cat. I'm your host, Emily Hall, and tonight we'll be chatting all about feline nutrition, specifically a raw diet, the benefits of it, as well as alternatives if it isn't something you can or want to do. If you're watching with us tonight or on the replay, be sure to say hello in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Questions are encouraged along the way as well. Our special guest for the evening is Tiffany McCullough. Tiffany is a vet tech, cat mom, curator of all things feline, and overall animal advocate. Hello, Tiffany. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? How are you doing? I am great. A little tired from a hectic work day, but overall, we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. How are you? I am great. Um, had a pretty busy day too, but I've been looking forward to this all day, Yay. getting to talk with you and hear all of your yeah. knowledge. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Lenny. Will be <laughs> he's in and out of the camera. Well, so. the more Lenny, the better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about yourself and Lenny yeah. and your other cats. So I, um, so fun fact, before I even like got started with animals at all, at all, I was doing business marketing, working in like corporate. Um, and I did that for like five or six years. I hated it. It was horrible. Um, and I literally just like walked out of my job. I quit my job because I was so miserable. I was like kind of battling depression at work and things like that. And I got home and I was like, oh gosh, what am I going to do? I need to make money. Um, and I've always loved animals, cats in particular, and went on to Indeed and saw that a nonprofit in my area was hiring and it was for like a kitten nursery. And I was like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And it just went from there. I have not looked back. Um, I've done everything in regards to like animals that you could think of, um, span neuter clinics. Um, I've helped work cruelty and neglect cases, owner surrender counseling, neonatal kittens, TNR kittens. Lenny was a feral cat um, that was trapped. So I've kind of covered a bunch of different things. Um, and now I'm working more on the private sector on the medical side, which I love. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you work as a vet tech, right? Yeah. I'm a vet tech now. Yes, I'm a vet tech now. Um, and I work at just like a regular, like private um, hospital. Um, we do spay and neuters, we do dentals, we do mass removals, and then we see patients day to day for vaccine boosters, exams. We do some emergencies, um, but just a, like your regular everyday veterinarian clinic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have some special knowledge and training like in feline nutrition right how did you get into that yeah. so i started working at a how do i want to call it like a specialty pet food store and a, a, and a lot of people who shop for cat food kind of understand or shop for pet food that there's a difference between a big box pet food store and a specialty pet food store mm -hmm. in a big box store you're going to see tons of brand options Whereas in a specialty store, you might see more of what we like to call like a higher end brand or you might hear it labeled as a boutique brand. So that's really where I learned about raw diets, um, meeting and being able to sit down and talk with um, vendors, people that work for a lot of these companies, um, being able to have one on one interviews with them, um, talking to veterinary nutritionists. I really did a lot of research. Um, I've been able to go to conferences um, that just went over feline nutrition and sit in seminars and things like that. So I've been very fortunate to do that as well. And it is night and day. The environment is night and day. Um, one thing that I will say that I have learned is when it comes to those specialty, smaller pet food stores, um, they tend to brand differently than like your big box stores. And mm -hmm. that's something that I can, I can get into later on. I won't like make it long and drawn out, but, um, the boutique diet has really taken over, really taken over. We see more of a boutique diet than we do a script diet a lot of times. Hi, buddy. <laughs> <He's> so sweet. <laughs> He's super loving. He is like, he is my favorite, favorite little man. 
I have another one. Springsteen. So this is Lenny Leonard. And then Springsteen or Stringbean is a, he's running around somewhere. He's the baby. He's two and Lenny is five. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. What a Thanks. sweet boy. Lots of headbutts. Lots of headbutts is his favorite thing, especially when I'm like on the phone or <laughs> with someone. He's this is my buddy. He's my buddy. So sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, so in in all of your research and education that you got when you were working at this uh, pet food store, what yeah. what did you learn about the basic dietary requirements for cats? So the biggest thing that people should know with cats, and this is whether they feed dry food, wet food, canned, um, a homemade diet, or uh, raw food, is that cats require high protein at all times. They are obligate carnivores, which just means they are true carnivores. Um, that is the biggest thing that people need to remember. No matter what, that protein number should be the highest number, regardless of whatever you're feeding. Now, caveat to that is, um, while cats are obligate carnivores and they do need a high protein diet, they also do need roughage is what I like to call it for lack of a better word. Because when you take big cats in the wild, your lions, your tigers, your panthers, your jaguars, they are going to eat the contents of the stomach. And usually that's going to be that vegetation or plant material that that animal has eaten that they are consuming. So, um, you will see some raw food brands put like spinach or kale or kelp or things like that in um, their formulas because it helps promote digestion and stool and things like that. So, um, you know, cats are domesticated. And as much as I would love to be able to feed my cat just straight meat all the time, it's dietary wise overall for digestion, they have to have some type of, of, plant matter somewhere. And you do see a lot of raw food brands incorporating that or um, even wet foods, like even on your fancy feast in, they have like fancy feast medleys, which actually mm -hmm. Lenny, Lenny really likes, very inexpensive. Um, but they have like spinach and tuna or they like Florentine where they mix some veggies in there. And that's really just to make it more well-rounded. Hi. <laughs> How are you? That's um, what, what other sort of requirements, what other things do they need? Um, high protein, high moisture, low carb. Mm. Those would be my top three. So high protein, um, high moisture and, and as, as high as mo in moisture as you can get. I know it's hard with dry food sometimes, but you can add warm water, mm -hmm. you can mix in wet food, or you can feed wet food in addition to dry food, um, and then you want it to have low carbs. We're seeing a lot of cats who are getting urinary stones and things like that from high carbs. Um, this is not a, a brand plug, but there is a brand called Waruga. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. They have one of the lowest um, phosphorus amounts in their wet food on the market. It's very, very low. They have a very high moisture content. Um, and actually, I have sampled Waruva because it, I mean, it's literally just food. There's no additives in there or anything like that. It kind of tastes like, um, oh God, this is embarrassing, but it kind of tastes like um, there's a soup on the market, like a human soup that has like very low sodium content, but that's what it tastes like. It just tastes like a bland stew or a bland soup. I had you it at a tasted coffee. it. Yeah, I had it at a conference one time. They had like a whole array of them laid out on the table. Um, what is that soup called? I can't think of it. If anyone knows what that soup is called, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm drawing a blank right now, but. Um, it's Veruva cat food. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but Veruva cat food is a wet food that you can feed to cats that have a variety of um dietary needs other than like maybe a certain protein allergy mm -hmm. so like chicken would is usually the protein that we see the most allergies with um lenny actually has a chicken allergy um so it's gotten to the point to now where he can't have chicken he can't have turkey i don't do any duck with him no poultry or fowl or anything like that um and he was eating actually have it right here written down purina pro plan ha 
which is a hydrolyzed protein. Um, and that just means that it's broken down into the smallest form to make it easier for them to digest, which is a benefit of script diets. Yeah. Which is what you wouldn't get from like a regular um, diet from the store. Yeah. Are there anything, any ingredients and things that people should watch out for that cats don't need or shouldn't have that are maybe included in some foods? Um, I think the biggest thing is not necessarily, sorry, I was reading that comment. Not necessarily. Um, I will say that if your cat does have a chicken allergy, read the bag because a lot of times chicken is used as a filler because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. And that's where we see a lot of problems. So if your cat has a chicken allergy and you buy a food and it says, hypothetically, turkey and salmon, flip that bag over because nine times out of 10, one of the first few ingredients in that line is going to be chicken. Yeah, I have noticed that. Which is really unfortunate. Um, cats don't need a lot of carbs. That's probably my biggest thing. So if you flip that bag over or flip that can over and you see potatoes at the top or rice at the top in those, I would say like the first four list of ingredients, because ingredients are going to read highest to lowest. Mm -hmm. You want those first few ingredients to be, if it's turkey and salmon, turkey and salmon need to be the first few ingredients. So that's the biggest thing. And it's unfortunate because the pet food industry is a business, right? So they're going to I don't want to say the word fillers, but they're going to formulate food a certain way. A lot of these brands to be able to mass produce as much as they can. Yeah. Um, in regards to ingredients, what you just asked and fillers, um, a lot of people get fillers misconstrued because fillers don't necessarily have to be a bad thing. And a lot of times people are like, oh, um, they're putting duck beaks and chicken feet and things like that inside of like, you know, they're grinding up beaks and feathers and that is not the case. The pet food industry is regulated. Um, the FDA regulates and then there is an organization called, oh, I'm drawing a blank. I can put it in the comments. Um, but there's a, a organization that regulates pet food, like the labels and how ingredients work. Mm -hmm. And the FDA actually regulates the actual ingredients. So there's different things that go hand in hand um, when it comes to pet food. So, you know, unless you flip a bag over and it says there's beaks and feathers and duck nails in here. I mean, that's not realistic. It's not realistic. So. Yeah. yeah. So um, looking at the comments, um, Nikki says that her cat Ranger has a chicken allergy and also has IBD mm -hmm. and, um, they said that they found, they feed something now that has just the fat of chicken, which is supposed to be okay for most dogs and cats with chicken allergies because they're usually allergic to the protein portion or that's what I've always mm -hmm. been taught and what my vet told me. Um, so that's a yeah, good. yeah. Usually it is the protein that they're more allergic to. So look at it like when a cat develops an allergy, it's something, it's usually something that we've been exposed to a lot or they've been exposed to a lot. So they're going to be more exposed to that protein or the meat of the chicken as opposed to the fat. And you'll see fat a lot of times. Um, also, fun fact about chicken fat, if your cat food has chicken fat in it, always try to store it in a cool, dry place. So like a hmm. container in your pantry with an airtight lid or make sure all the air is out of that bag before you seal it and you want to keep it out of sunlight and heat because that chicken fat can help to cause your um, food to spoil faster. A veterinary hmm. nutritionist told me that. Interesting. Which I thought was very interesting. So that's why you see a lot of like pet food and stuff kind of stored further back Um you know, kind of away from moisture, away from sunlight in the windows. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, so you touched on a raw diet um, briefly. What, yeah. what, what are the benefits of a raw diet? Like the benefits of a raw diet. Um, so one, I want to start off with saying, I know everyone has heard biologically appropriate. That is like the coin phrase. So biologically appropriate can mean different things for Lenny is 
digging his nails in my leg. I'm sorry. Biologically appropriate can mean different things to different brands. So overall, for us, it just means this diet is going to be as close as possible to what your cat would eat in the wild. The only thing about that is, regardless of whatever, unless your cat goes out and physically kills something, it's still going to be processed in some form, right? Mm -hmm. Because these raw food companies have to make sure that there's no bacteria or anything like that. So that's going to be the difference between going to Publix and getting a pack of chicken breast, opening it up and feeding it to your cat, as opposed to getting um, raw food that has been specifically curated and recipeed, for lack of a better word, for your cat. Mm -hmm. So benefits of raw. What I've seen personally, because I have fed raw before, um, you do see better digestion. You do see better coats. You do see smaller stools. A lot of times the stool kind of disintegrates because they're absorbing most of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, and it is going to be high protein and very high moisture. And then the benefits of raw also is that it comes in two forms. So you have your frozen raw and then your freeze dried raw. The biggest thing with your freeze dried raw is it's just raw meat. All the moisture has been pulled out, but they usually want you to rehydrate that meat to, to get that moisture content back in there. But mm -hmm. um, if people, if you can get past the prep work of raw, raw is very time consuming and it is not something that you can skimp on. You should be sanitizing your surfaces every time. Um, I don't recommend for people to feed raw if they have young children in the house, especially toddlers, um, cats, dogs. We've seen studies where salmonella has kind of hung out around the mouth. And if they're grooming you or licking you like Lenny is lovable, you know, that's all on, on the face and things like that. So is this with... Like if people are making the raw food themselves, not the commercial. Both. Raw. Both. Okay. You've seen it with both. Yes. And the vast majority of veterinarians out there are going to be completely against raw feeding. Of all types? Yes. And the Why reason for that is, um, and I've, I've had this conversation with a lot of veterinarians. I've actually had this conversation with veterinarians that I work with. Um, but the biggest thing is there is not enough science behind raw diets. What there is a lot of science of is what we see affects why. So we've seen salmonella in homes where they've gone into homes where raw food is being fed and they've done, you know, swabs and swipes for bacteria mm -hmm. and they found bacteria. So you have to make sure that you are thoroughly cleaning everything. Um, I wouldn't ever recommend feeding raw in a plastic bowl at all. Mm. You want to do like metal or ceramic. Um, Cause bacteria just, it, it lingers. It really lingers. So um, I don't recommend feeding raw food to immunocompromised cats like Lenny's FIV positive. Mm -hmm. um, cats that have irritable bowel disease, cats that have pancreatitis, um, things like that. I don't, I wouldn't recommend a raw diet to those, those types of cats, but cats who are overall healthy. My, my professional opinion is this. I think people should feed what works for their animal. Um, but I also think that they should work in partnership with their veterinarian. Um, there's ways that you can also feed raw and not break the bank because raw tends to be very expensive, especially yeah. when it's frozen. Um, so you can do a dry food and, you know, there's like freeze dried toppers that you can get mm -hmm. or you can do freeze dried treats. Um, so there's ways to incorporate that raw food diet without maybe breaking the bank if that's a concern as well. For things like the the freeze dried treats and toppers yeah. and even the freeze dried diets are all of the the bacteria and all of that is that a concern with those as that well? That is a concern. Yes, that mm -hmm. is a concern too. Um, so it's just, I think the biggest thing is that people don't realize who have not fed raw before is that it is very time consuming. You have to be super diligent about how you're handling it. Um, surfaces that you're touching and things like that because you know sometimes if we're if we're making like food at home you know you might open up a pack of something and then turn on your faucet or turn on your sink or turn mm. on your stove or things like that you just you know because you're in your kitchen but 
you should be wiping down those surfaces very diligently. Um, you can't leave raw food out. So mm -hmm. if you leave raw food out to feed your cat and then let's say they don't eat all of it, it's got to come up and it's got to be disposed of. So, you know, that it gets to be expensive. I do know pet owners, cat owners that feed raw and it works for their cat. Um, but it's pricey. It can be pricey. So there's, you know, but the, yeah. the biggest thing is just raw feeding doesn't really have the support of the main veterinary world. Mm -hmm. I know there are some veterinarians who advocate for raw diets, um, but few and far between, I would say, just from my experience and being in the industry, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, um, I've definitely heard that. And I have fed raw myself multiple like in, at different times uh, in yeah. my life and my cat's life and in different ways when I first started feeding raw. So I got into it several years back because one of my cats, Sophie, um, has, she suffers from a lot of congestion issues, like upper mm -hmm. respiratory stuff mm -hmm. and some ear stuff. Yeah. And so I tried a raw diet and it cle cleared it all up because mm -hmm. she used to be on antibiotics a lot. You know, we'd get her mm -hmm. on antibiotics, it would knock it out, but then it would just come back again. I was right. like, I don't want her to be on antibiotics like constantly. Right. Like, that's yeah. not good. Yeah. So, um, I started feeding a raw diet and at first I was making it myself. And, and like you said, it is very time consuming. It is. <laughs> I, I was buying, you know, and you also have to make, be careful on the portions, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the protein to bone to organ ratios mm -hmm. and all of that, it gets very yes. complicated. It's like, it a does, especially when you're doing it on your own. Yeah. Um, there is a raw food brand for those that are interested in feeding raw that's called primal pet foods. Mm -hmm. Um, they are probably one of the most diligent raw food brands that I've ever encountered or that I've experienced before. Um, but they have ratios on their actual bags. So if they have like a turkey and salmon, you see how much percentage everything is. And they also include, um, like vegetables and supplements and things like that. And I think that's the biggest thing to remember is that the, is the supplements as well. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was making it, I was having to add like different vitamins mm -hmm. and I mean, it was like a whole recipe and it was expensive yeah. and it was time consuming and I ended up not being able to maintain it, you know? Yeah. And so now um, I do a freeze dried diet for yeah. Sophie and we've been switching between primal and Stella and Chewy's mm -hmm. and yeah. um it's into, I'm glad I you brought up the bacteria question because I'll admit, like, for some reason, I just had it in my head, like, oh, well, it's like freeze dried. It's just like little crumbles. Right. This isn't, yeah, you it's, know? Still, it's still raw. It just doesn't have the moisture in there. Yeah. Well, so I have been very careless. I need to go clean my <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No, um, yeah. It's just, it's just more of a convenient thing because, you know, some people, there are a lot of vegan cat owners out there mm -hmm. and they just don't want to handle, for an example, they don't want to handle that raw meat. So freeze dried works a lot better for them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a lifelong vegetarian. I've, yeah. I've never eaten meat before. And my husband, he eats meat. And he, when I was making Sophie's food, like with all the raw meat, he would, he was laugh at me. He'd be like, man, you don't even make me meat, but you're, you're handling all that raw meat for the cats. <laughs> right. And you're just like, well, I don't well, know. Got to do what I got to do. Yeah. For my baby. <laughs> I know. No, I get it. I get it. Um, I will say as a quick plug right here, no cat should be vegan at oh, all, at yeah. all, at all. Um, cats are not designed to be vegan. You might be able to get away with having a dog that's vegan or on a plant, a majority plant-based diet, but cats are not, they are not designed that way at all. Yeah. I've heard, <laughs> um, it's, well, uh, like you said, they're obligate carnivores and they need that protein, but it's also the right. taurine, right? They don't get the yes. taurine and they can go blind and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, so humans and canines, we pull tar taurine from what we eat and then our body can replicate it and make more every time we eat. But cats do not have this ability at all. So all the taurine that they get is from their diet. We see that in protein. And then we also see that in um, organs. So organ meat, which is why raw feeding is also popular as well. But you can you can do like freeze dried organ treats and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but no, cats can't they can't make taurine on their own.
which is which sucks because like I feel like out of everyone they need it the most. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um so on the subject of all these different types of raw diet, you mentioned the frozen and the freeze dried and then we talked about like making it there there are so many different kinds like if you really get into the raw stuff right there's yeah. like the whole prey and the freaking mm -hmm. prey and all those mm -hmm. other things um what are you what are your thoughts on all of those and would you recommend them at all if you're gonna feed a raw diet i like a whole prey diet because they would eat a whole prey diet more so in the wild um i'm not as super familiar with the franken prey but i I like a whole prey diet because they're going to get muscle meat. They're going to get protein. They're going to get um, the organ meat as well. So I do. Um, there's a other company, Origin and Akana. They're kind of under the same umbrella of Champion Foods. They do really, really good whole prey diets. Um, a lot of the Origin side of it is very, very high protein, like super rich. So I've had um, people that I like have pets it for. I've done consultations for put their cat on origin and they've gotten like diarrhea diarrhea really bad so then they switched to akana which is um their sister brand and it's more of like a single source protein so it's mm. a little bit more gentle in the stomach so yeah um speaking of gentle stomachs um nikki is wondering if you have any advice for feeding a cat that has ibd you're what are you feeding right now We'll wait for Nikki to answer that. Um, she said that she's um, her vet. They've decided to hold off on steroids. Yeah. Um. So she's just trying to, you know, do whatever she can to keep yeah. his belly happy. Yeah. So long term steroid use um, for cats in general can pose a lot of health problems. Wellness core digestive health. Um. So Lenny has asthma. He's FIV positive and he has horrible asthma. His lungs are the worst. Um, so Lenny has had to have rounds of prednisolone, which is a steroid. Um, and we do a round of it and then we taper him off. The problem is there's been a small percentage of cats that have had really horrible adverse reactions to steroids over time, especially mm -hmm. when they are immunocompromised where they have certain types of issues. So um, I think you're holding off is a great way to go wellness core i like wellness i do actually my cats have eaten wellness um mm -hmm. i That's don't have too. yeah i haven't i don't have like a end all be all brand of food that i've just fed them for years i tend to every few months i will rotate their food well, that's, yeah. that's good. I mean, they say it's good to yeah. rotate their food. So mm -hmm. one, they don't become so picky. Right. And two, they get variety. I mean, we wouldn't want to be eating the same thing right. every day. No. Um, I rotate their food. Core Wellness is one of the brands that I really love. I actually also really love Purina Pro Plan, um, which I know sounds cliche because I work in the vet industry, but I really love Purina Pro Plan um, for cats. Um Sorry, I was I'm thinking and reading the comments at the same time. I'll, I'll let you. Know. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing is if you're seeing IBD in a cat and they're having it's getting severe, the best thing to do is to talk to the doctor or the vet about a script diet if they haven't recommended one, um, and to also do more gentle protein. So, you know, beef is going to be kind of rich. If there's a chicken allergy, you can try turkey. Um, lamb is super rich. Um, duck is super rich. So you want to stay away from those like red meats or those more rich like proteins. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard when they have IBD because stress can exacerbate those symptoms as well. So yeah. if you're, you change the diet and you're still seeing certain symptoms, Take a look at their environment. Are they stressed? Are they hiding? Are they over grooming themselves? Like things like that as well, because stress plays a very key role in the overall health of cats, especially when they have some type of immune issue. And obviously their digestive tract plays a huge role in their immune system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nikki said that 
the food that he's on now is fish. fish. Okay. Yeah. How long has he how long has he been on that food? She said um a couple months and that couple it months. seems to have helped. It's helped more than any other food that they've tried. Yeah, I really like Core Wellness. Um, I like their fish brands and they have a variety of fish brands, I, formulas. I think they have like salmon and trout. Um, but we it can take months to see like a real change. Um, especially that's why vets usually recommend a food trial last because it takes so long. Hmm. Takes so long to do. It's only been like two months. Yeah, I would still give it a couple more months for sure to get his system used to it. Um I when I switched Lenny, it it probably took me like four and a half to five months to get Lenny's system under control. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean Lenny would eat and then a few minutes later projectile vomit. And I just was like, okay. Okay, that can't that can't be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's I know what I'm talking about you, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, Big thing, well, obviously, my my whole community, the Kitty Cat Go community, is built yeah. from people who travel and adventure with their cats. A lot of yeah. people go camping or take their cats on vacations and road trips. And if you're feeding a raw diet, especially a frozen one, and you're camping with your cat, it's difficult. You you, know, yeah. you don't really have a way to store it or keep it refrigerated or anything like that. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend for people if they want to feed or do feed a raw diet, but they travel a lot. So for some things that clients of mine have done that I think is like genius um, is they've either used like if they have babies, empty baby food jars or um, the little, they're like the plastic Tupperwares, but they're glass with the twist off tops, just little containers. Mm -hmm. And they pre-portioned everything and packed it in a cooler on ice. So that's something that you could do and then just take it out and thaw as you need it. The good thing about cats is if they really love the food, especially when it comes to raw, it doesn't have to be like completely thawed at room temperature. I mean, obviously you don't want it to be like hard ice chunks, but if it's got a little bit of a chill to it, they will eat it. Um, I also feel like if portioning out frozen raw and having to thaw it while you're traveling or on vacation or camping or hiking or whatever is too much, then I feel like it's okay to switch to that freeze dried for a little bit and just take the bag of crumbled patties, crumbled patties, take the bag of um, freeze dried patties. We usually see freeze dried patties um, with you or like Primal will do like nuggets. Mm -hmm. And usually a cat's only getting like what, maybe one to two nuggets. It just depends on the weight or how much your cat is eating. Um, but, you know, a cooler for sure on ice, um, ice packs, freeze dried. Um, I wouldn't, if your cat's been eating raw food for a long time, I wouldn't necessarily do dry food mm. because the problem is dry food and raw food have two different digestion times, right? So that could cause some GI upset. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Those that would probably be the biggest thing is to keep it on ice. It also depends on how long you're traveling for. But those freeze dried nuggets or patties usually come in a resealable bag that you can just take with you anywhere and then you can just portion it out however. Um, and I would just take, you know, some water with me to rehydrate it and stir it. Maybe do a demo at home and see if your cat likes it and then mm -hmm. kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. If you're going to be feeding something different than their normal food try it out before you go because you don't want to get on your trip and yeah. then realize that your cat's not going to eat the food that you packed. Right. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. It is, unless there's like a health thing, health issue, it is so much easier to switch a cat from dry to raw. Usually, usually they take right to it with no problem. Sometimes you have cats that are like, I don't like raw. I don't want it. Um, and that's not uncommon. Cats are very picky in general. Um, and some cats are just very used to having a certain type of food, dry or wet or whatever, and they may not want the raw. Um, but switching from raw back to dry can take some time. Um, there are people that feed both. 
hmm. to try to get the best of both worlds. So if you're going to do that, you want to feed your raw food in the morning and feed your dry food at night to give your dry food the longest amount of time to digest. But never put your thawed out raw and kibble mixed in together because hmm. um, that can cause some GI upset as well. Yeah. So you mentioned that some people feed both to get the benefits of mm -hmm. each. So I know an argument that I've heard um, against pretty much any diet besides a dry diet. So the people that are like pro dry diet, they argue that the um, the when the cat chews the hard food, it like helps clean their teeth and stuff. What do so yes and no. So. If your cat has like, you know, a little bit of tartar buildup here or there, then yes. But if your cat has like stuck or plaque, if your cat has like stuck on tartar that's hardened, no. So I always tell people to attribute thinking that dry food is going to clean the teeth in a way that we would like it to. Like us as humans taking a bag of Oreos and crushing it up and dipping our toothbrush in there and then brushing our teeth with the crushed up Oreos. Because dry food, we're going to see carbohydrates and carbs turn into sugars. Um, so, yes, the crunching is going to help to keep plaque away and break off plaque. But if your cat has substantial or significant, depends on how you want to take that plaque and tartar buildup, there's nothing on the planet that is going to replace a cleaning. Yeah, there's nothing on the planet. Now, there is something called, I want to say it's called Prodent. You can get it on Amazon. Um, but it is like a plaque remover. It's like a powder. Hmm. But it's a plaque remover. You can put it in there, sprinkle it in their food. Um, I've heard veterinarians recommend this. And that is, it's kind of jagged, but not jagged enough to where they can't chew it. Um, but I've seen cats have success with that. Um, the biggest thing is to start early. I actually, so Lenny will not let me brush his teeth at all. And that's fine. So Lenny, we usually have like dental cleanings and things like that. Springsteen, who's in the corner over here, he's three. So I've actually been brushing his teeth since he like started getting his big teeth. Mm -hmm. um, every cat is different. Not every cat is going to let you put a toothbrush in their mouth or one of those little finger gripper things. They will bite you. They love you, but they don't, they don't like that. Um, so no, dry food is beneficial and it will help, but dry food should not replace oral health care mm -hmm. in general. So if someone opts for an only wet food diet or an only raw diet, they're not missing on any like dental benefits that a dry food diet would have. No. And sometimes, and if, if I'm being fair, a raw food diet is probably going to offer the most benefits because of those natural enzymes. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I have seen cats who have like phenomenal teeth and they just, they're eating a raw diet. And then I've seen cats who don't have the best teeth and they're eating a raw diet. So it, it, you know, it just depends. It also depends on if they have like underlying health issues and, and things of that nature. So, yeah. 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 So many things can contribute to dental health. Like, I mean, I have seven cats and I have one who he, he just has bad teeth. And, you know, yeah. and he's only um, he had a dental a couple years ago and they had to remove a few teeth and he was only like four. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, how does my four year old cat yeah. have bad teeth? But my 10 year old cat, his teeth are fine. Yeah. And the vet is just like, well, it's genetics, you know, it's you, genetics. Yeah. That's just that's just it. And Lenny was a street cat. Um, so he lived outside for the longest time. And you would think that Lenny's teeth would be amazing from like living outside. No, no, not, not the best, <laughs> not the best teeth. Um, but yeah, it, it just comes down to genetics. Um, and we usually see the same thing with small dogs, small dogs very early on tend to have horrible teeth. Hmm. So because they're, and if you think about it, like small dogs are not gnawing and chewing on things as much as a big dog would. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. Um, oh, 
going back to the travel thing, Julie says that they use the primal freeze dried nuggets when they travel. Yeah. They're lightweight and easy to portion. Yes. Yes. They are lightweight, easy to portion. Um, that bag is just super handy. Um, and they're just, you know, when you pull them out, they're not disintegrating in your hands. Mm -hmm. So very easy to portion and, and prepackage if you need to, for sure. Yeah. Um, so a question that I've, that I have, because I've been feeding the freeze dried raw now for a few weeks with Sophie and, yeah. um, how, how long, I can't find this answer on the bags. How long will it last in the fridge if you haven't hydrated it yet? The freeze dried food? Yeah. I am not sure. I feel like I had that answer somewhere. Like in my, um, hang on. I feel like I had this answer in my, like, I have like a digital notebook mm. um, or notepad that I keep things in. Yeah. So you're, you're keeping the freeze dried nuggets, patties or whatnot in the, in the fridge. Yeah. Un unhydrated. Yes. Oh no. I would have to look. I would I'll have to look it up. It. Yeah. yeah. It's I not like a few days though, right? Like once you open that bag, you don't have to feed all of the nuggets and like a no, few days. No, no. Um, and I know like people that use the nuggets as toppers or treats, and they just keep, you know, they let the air out, seal the bag, and they just keep it on the counter, but they're using it every day. Yeah. As well. Okay. So yeah. That's good to know. I got worried. I was like, oh, no, we've opened this bag. Because, you know, like meat, if you open meat, it, you know, you have to eat it within like a few days or you <coughs> open a can of cat food, and you mm -hmm. need to eat it within a few days. And so I was like, but that's the, excuse me, that's the benefit of the freeze dried is you kind of can stretch it. Yeah. A little more. Yeah. Um, Darren is wondering if there is a significant nutritional difference between air dried and freeze dried. I won't say any particular names. <laughs> um, no, I feel like freeze dried is just taking some of the more of the moisture out, but I don't think so. I don't think it like changes any of the nutritional value or makes it less palatable for your cat. I yeah. think there's more freeze dried on the market than air dried though. Yeah, I'm curious, what are the names? I haven't heard of air dried before. What are the names, Darren? Yeah, what are the names? <laughs> Drop <I>, those names. <laughs> yeah. Um, and no. Nikki says, I didn't know you should refrigerate it at all. And I don't know that you should either. I just do because I'm paranoid. I didn't know if I needed to refrigerate it. So. Yeah. I don't think you have to. I think, if, you know, if it's something there, I don't think you have to refrigerate the freeze dry. Now, once it's hydrated, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. when it's it's still in the dry form, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Darren has another question. Yeah. Do you offer cat's garlic in any amount for fleas? No. Okay. No. Mm -mm. Um, too many, too many wonderful things on the, on the market. No, no garlic for kitties. Hmm. Yeah. It's well, um, Peak. Zwee Peak is the air dried brand. Yes. So yeah. I'm not familiar with their air dried, but I've, um Lenny's actually tried their uh canned food they are an amazing brand um but no I they are expensive as well but no if it's just a different process of them pulling the moisture out just like you know it's either air dried or freeze dried but I think the end result is they still just pull the moisture out yeah it might just um, be different. perhaps air dried I mean this is I'm just totally guessing but I would imagine air dried takes longer yeah. To dry out than a, than freeze drying. Um, Jillian says, what about coconut oil? Do you offer that? It seems so unnatural, but I heard it was good for them. So coconut oil. So coconut oil for cats. Um, if they get it on their coat, it's safe for them to lick it off. My only thing with that is cats are so sensitive, right? So. A lot of times when it comes to coconut oil, because it is so oily and fatty, 
um, they can, if you're like putting it in their food or anything like that, we can see diarrhea. Mm. Um, and that's something that we want to avoid. Um, a lot of things that we can do for dogs, we don't want to do for cats. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing. Whereas you can drop a spoonful of coconut oil in your dog's dry food and call it a day or, you know, let them lick the spoon or things like that. Cats just, they're just very sensitive overall and some, and they don't work like that. Now, giving your cat a little bit of coconut oil, you know, like that much fingertip every now and then is fine as a treat. Giving your cat whipped cream as a treat. Mm -hmm. um, the boys have gotten whipped cream for nail trims because mm -hmm. I want them to focus on that. Um, every now and then is fine. It's just not something that we want to do regularly. I've heard people using coconut oil to brush their cat's teeth. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I mean, I don't know how effective that is. I was wondering that too. When I heard that, I thought it was very, very strange. I was yeah, like, I don't why know. Why would you use coconut is. oil in and not it, toothpaste? You know, a lot of times we take things that, and this is not, I'm not blaming humans. I'm, I'm blaming like marketing and branding. But we take things that we do for ourselves or that we might do for our dogs and then we try them out on our cats. So, like, obviously, like, humans will oil pull and things like that. And it's just, mm -hmm. I mean, if your cat has horrible teeth or bad breath, like, brushing their teeth with coconut oil is not going to be as conducive as getting toothpaste for cats and brushing their teeth. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So. I always wondered. I was like, why not just use toothpaste? Uh <laughs> It's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, all right. We got we got some questions yeah. coming in, Tiffany. All right. Here you go. <laughs> How do you deworm your cats? Herbal dewormers or veterinary prescriptions? Veterinary prescriptions. And I'm only saying that not because I'm a vet tech, but I'm only saying that because usually, in my experience, the herbal remedies don't work that well. Um, it's... I'm sorry. He's like, he's like right, right here. Um, yeah. And also, you know, for the herbal remedies, there's so many different types of intestinal parasites that we see with cats um, and even with kittens, right? Usually they're going to get intestinal parasites from their mom. And also when it comes to things like tapeworms, which come from fleas, Mm -hmm. If you're using an herbal remedy to treat the tapeworms, but you're not treating the fleas, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. Um, my boys take Revolution Plus, which is my favorite. Um, it is an all-in-one preventative. It does heartworm prevention, fleas and ticks, and intestinal parasites. All-in-one, mm -hmm. right on the back of the neck every 30 days, and then that's it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there's no chewable for cats um, right now. And again... All of this stuff is just science based on how cats function. Um, I'm hoping that someone makes a chew for them soon because it would just be easy to give them a treat. But cats are not, oftentimes cats are not as food motivated as dogs, right? So how many times have you like offered your cat something and they're like, no, I don't want it. Or they enjoy a treat or they enjoy a certain type of wet food for like 400 years. And then on 401, they're like, no, I don't want it. So I mean, I'm not knocking herbal remedies at all. I think herbal remedies to an extent are amazing. Um, but when it comes to really treating something that needs to be addressed, then, you know, going through your veterinarian is is ideal because you're going to have that medical support and that science at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of herbal remedies, Nikki is asking about what you think of mushroom defense and other stuff like that. I have to admit, I'm not sure what that is. No. Um, I get asked questions like that a lot. Things like mushroom defense and herbals and CBD for cats and things like that. The, the biggest thing, guys, is we have to be so careful with what we're introducing to our cat system because again, and this is like my biggest thing that I harp on all the time, cats are so sensitive. Um, there's one CBD brand that I do like for cats. Um, but as far as like mushrooms and garlic and mm -mm, no. <clears throat> now I'm saying if it works for your cat, 
do it. I'm not saying that. If it's, you've been trying it, it's working for your cat, by all means. Just make sure that they're seeing their veterinarian regularly. But once we start, like, ordering a bunch of stuff and pulling a bunch of stuff from off the internet or things that we see or, or it worked for our friend's cat or whatever, and we're introducing all these things into these, like, very complex but very simple beings, it just can be overwhelming. Yeah. Cats are very simple. Um and, you know, their requirements are can be detailed, but also their requirements are very simple, too. So we just want to make sure that we're not, you know, throwing too many random things at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think considering what you talked about at the beginning of the episode, what's biologically appropriate? Like mm -hmm. if they were out in the wild, is this something that they would be eating, you know? And yeah. Um. So Darren is asking too about milk, like raw goat milk or cow milk or anything like that. Do you offer that at all? Or so um, I don't do any milk for my cat specifically. Um, cats. So let's start with kittens, right? So kittens are going to get what they need from their mother. They're going to nurse. As kittens get older and turn into young cats, adult cats, older cats. They become more lactose intolerant. This is not like whatever year when we could just set a bowl of milk outside and, you know, cats would come running and, and drink the milk. We have to be very careful about that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Primal Pet Foods does have a raw goat milk um, that is formulated for cats. Um, I've seen some cats really love it and I've seen some cats not love it. It just depends. Um <clears throat> But again, from a medical veterinary standpoint, it's, you know, it's a treat. Yeah. There's there's going to be immuno things in it that they can have. But again, certain cats that have certain health issues, they shouldn't get any type of raw um, dairy products. And I absolutely would not do cow's milk at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard um, of a product for like kittens like who maybe lost their mom but mm -hmm. they're too they're not old enough to eat regular cat food and there's yeah. like a raw goat milk product that's meant to be as like a supplement to get them you know yeah. by until they can eat regular food yeah um no for kittens <clears throat> standard 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 industry standard foster standard neonatal industry standard is KMR and that's just the kitten, kitten milk replacement. It comes in a powder form. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. And um, it comes in like a liquid can form as well. That's going to be more nutritionally sound. And it's going to mimic more of what mom is going to give. I mean, obviously nothing will replace mother's milk. But yeah, um, yeah, definitely not no cow's milk. Yeah. Um. So if someone is feeding a raw diet that maybe they're preparing themselves so it's not yeah. any of the commercially made ones that might have some of the like you had mentioned spinach and kale and kelp <clears throat> and things as being in there yeah. to be that uh, vegetation what are some vegetation alternatives that people could feed their cats if they're preparing the raw themselves what would you recommend so um you can do spinach you can do Veggies are hard because they have to be formulated a certain way. So it really depends on the, hold on my screen. Okay. It really depends on the protein. Oh, I have this in my notes. Hang on. But um, the biggest thing is not so much the veggies, but more so the supplements. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So spinach. You can do pumpkin. And when I say pumpkin, I mean just like plain canned pumpkin. So there you might see like pumpkin for pie or something like that. You don't want to do anything that's got anything added to it, like cinnamon or sugar or anything like that. Just plain pumpkin. Um, you can do peas. You can do carrots. Those will probably be the biggest thing. No onions, no garlic. Um, be very careful with fruit. Um, there is a website that you can go on to, and I want to say it's through Tufts University. 
Tufts University has an amazing veterinary department um, and they have an amazing nutritional department as well. And I think they have a website where you can go and it gives you kind of like a breakdown of how you can do homemade diets for your kid. Hmm. That's probably the biggest thing. But again, this would have to be something that you would have to make all the time. Yeah. Regularly all the time. I mean, you can make it and freeze it, but it's just getting those supplements right. And even for me, like that's the hard part because of how the math works. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, to make your cat's food and make sure that you're not missing a vitamin or nutrient yeah. or something that they need. I definitely would consult with like a veterinary nutritionist for sure. If I was going to make my cat's food regularly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And um, monitor their weight. Always monitor their weight. If you're feeding raw or feeding, feeding anything really, but especially if you're feeding a homemade diet, always monitor the weight um, and keep track and just look for any changes in weight loss or weight gain. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Lewis is asking for you to repeat the recommended cat food brand that you mentioned at the beginning, the one that, that was low carb and high protein. Um, was that the, the Waruba? Oh, yes. Um, okay. so Waruba is majority canned food, but they have very high protein, very low carb, very low phosphorus. Um, I mean, I think it's like point something as, as, as far as the phosphorus, but Waruba is a good wet food to feed for cats that have like a variety of nutritional needs um, because it is high moisture. It's good for cats who might have like some urinary problems. Now, this is not to replace like a script diet. So if your cat's on a prescribed medical food, then always, always talk to your vet about incorporating, you know, this canned food or any type of additional food on the side because sometimes cats they don't like the the script food right it's not the best tasting thing it's not palatable sometimes um so maybe being able to introduce something like waruba that is waruba is what i would call a non-threatening food it's just great it's wonderful um and it's very accessible because you can get it at a regular pet food store or a high-end pet food store or amazon so and yeah, that, that was the one that I tried, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's Waruba. It's Waruba. Um, our favorite here in the house is Pollock and chicken. It's literally water shredded chicken. Hmm. No, um, additives. There's no veggies. There's no seasonings. There's no vegetables. It's literally moisture and meat. Hmm. And what was that called? Uh, Pollock and chicken is what it's called. That's it comes in a yellow can. Um, and I mean, when you open it up, it literally looks like someone just shredded up some chicken breast in some water mm. or like a, a un, unsalted chicken broth, I guess you could say. Low sodium chicken broth is good too. If you want to mix that into your catch dry food, you can do that on occasion to, to jazz it up. Um, if you're going to add water to your cat's dry food, warm water, because warm water helps to expand kibble and release aromas. Hmm. It's interesting. Well, um, that, that's all of my questions, uh, for the night. So Tiffany, yeah. thank you. I, yeah. I no, learned a lot. This was so fun. So fun. So much fun. I was very excited to do this. Um, I'm, I'm like, I want to try to answer as many questions <laughs> as I can before we, uh, wrap up, wrap up for sure. But, um, no, this was amazing. This was great. I am obsessed with your platform. This is so cool. Thank I you. love everything cat related. Me too. <laughs> um, Tess is correct. That is the correct way to spell it. It's W E R U B A, and it is a com the people that started Waruba. The We Ru and Va is a combination of all three of their pets' names. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's that's cute. <laughs> yes, their hydrating purees is really good. Yes. Thanks, guys. 
Thank you so much. Thanks, Darren, Nikki. Um, yeah, and I mean, that's what I really love about cat food. I wish, and I, I talk about this a lot on my Instagram, but I wish the pet food industry would focus a lot more on the specific needs of cats. I feel like a lot of times cats play second fiddle to all the wonderful, cool things that dogs get mm -hmm. um, and different options that dogs have. And that's unfortunate um, because their diet is such a huge part of their um, day to day. But yeah, you can do dry and then incorporate some freeze dried raw on top. You can do uh, freeze dried treats. There's a company I can't think of what they're called right now, but they have freeze dried minnows. Yeah. Like, how seen, cool is that? I've seen those. Yeah. yeah like, how cool is that? Um, also, whatever you're feeding your cat, periodically make it fun because cats are hunters by nature, mm -hmm. right? It's in their DNA. So get um, a puzzle mat um, for the boys. I've even like just a basic cupcake tin or a cookie sheet, cookie mm -hmm. sheet cupcake tin. and every other one I'll put something different and so I'll put dry food in this one and wet food in this one or you know we have like puzzle balls that they have to bat around and then the dry food comes out so anything yeah. that's interactive as well is is helpful yeah yeah that, that's um that's a great tip and um a few episodes ago I had Ingrid Johnson on and we talked all about using, yeah we talked all about using puzzle feeders and things like that yeah so. I, I love her um she's like one of my favorite people vital essentials guys vital essentials makes the minnows oh yeah yeah there's another newer company too called Icelandic and they, yes. they make um herring you can buy like yes red yes. herring and all kinds of and it looks like a little fish <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But um, and even like when you see things like this, I'm going to see if I can hold it up to the camera. Eh, there it is. So even though it says like four dogs, this is a freeze dried treat. So your cat can totally have it. I would just make sure that portion wise, it's something that they can put in their mouths and it's not overbearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if it's yeah. just a single ingredient protein, there would be no reason a cat couldn't have it. Right. Is there right. any kind of protein that a cat cannot eat? No. Um, unfortunately, there aren't like a ton of novelty proteins for dogs. So there is a company called Signature that makes um, single source protein dog food. And they do everything from kangaroo to goat. Kangaroo? For dogs. Yes. So like where they source it from is like their version of chicken. Right. Because mm -hmm. for us, you're like, ah, kangaroo. But they do goat, they do kangaroo, they do all types of fowl. Um, I think most veterinarians would want to try a cat on a hydrolyzed protein diet. So it's either, either, either going to be an HP or an HA diet. And hydrolyzed just means that that protein is broken down, broken down, broken down to the smallest, smallest, smallest molecule kind of tricks your cat's body um, so that it's not triggered allergy wise hmm. and we see a huge amount of success on hydrolyzed diets for cats and a lot of hydrolyzed diets for cats are now including urinary hmm. um, benefits as well so like if you have a cat that has like food allergies mm -hmm. and maybe some urinary issues a lot of those diets are being combo formula so you just have to feed one thing or you can feed two cats the same thing because script diets are expensive yeah they're yeah. pricey Yes, kangaroo. Huh. Yep. Very interesting. Yeah. Thanks, guys. This is fun. <laughs> yes, it was. And I, I so appreciate that you have such a well-rounded view and opinion on diets. I think sometimes you can talk to some people and they're very, like, raw, raw feeders sometimes, you know, can be very, like, this is the only way. And then there's the other end of the spectrum where people are all like, no, dry food is the mm -hmm. only way. Raw is horrible, you know? Yes. I very much appreciated that you explained the benefits to all types of diets and that, you know, there's no one 100% right way, you know? Right. There's all these different things to consider and what's right for one cat might mm -hmm. not be the best for another cat. And we just right. have to, you know, do yeah. what's best for cats and do what we can do. Right. And I mean, not, not everybody can afford to feed raw and it's 
you know, it's not fair to shame someone because they don't feed their pet raw. Maybe they want to try it, but they just, they can't afford it. So yeah. I think it's important to embrace all the sides and been, and show benefits for all the sides. And I mean, if dry food was so completely horrible, it would not be on the market. Yeah. So, oh, freeze dried coated kibble. Mm, yeah. They probably make more of those for cats. I see a lot for dogs, but I mean, that's a win-win mm -hmm. too. Yeah, my dog, I his food is a mix. It's um like kibble and then also has freeze-dried pieces in there. So it's like getting both. But I haven't seen really something like that for cats. But so you're right. Like dogs get all this like innovative mm -hmm. stuff and cats eventually might get it, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's true. It sucks. I have emailed so many pet food companies asking them about that and um yeah i'm 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 working on on a on a, a big post like a video that i want to maybe upload to youtube about it it's going to take like some time for me to kind of put everything together but i every chance i get i call these brands out i just posted on my instagram a, a bag of cat food that was just opened by a friend of mine and i mean let's say the food started like right there it's horrible. It's horrible. Like I get content settling and things like that, but if you're going to charge someone 60 bucks for a six pound bag of food, like the food should start at the top. Yeah. Well, what's with all that yeah. wasted space? That's like when you open a potato, a bag of chips, Yes. you know, and it's like 50% air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it makes me so frustrated. And as long as I'm able to, I'm going to advocate for cats as much as I can. Um, because it just, it, it grinds my gears, you guys. It, like, really makes me frustrated. Right? Yeah. He says, yeah. But thank yeah. you so much for having me and for having Lenny. Yes. Well, Lenny. thank you. His brother somewhere. I don't know where his brother is. Well, Springsteen, he's he's playing it cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, nail trim, buddy. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank this you. has been really great. I have learned a lot. And Yay. for for those watching, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, be sure to give Tiffany a follow on Instagram. She's Yay. at Tiff Talks Cats on Instagram and Tiff the Tech on TikTok. Yes, I just started um, TikTok, so bear with me. I don't know what I'm doing. I am also new to the TikTok world. It's uh, like the wild, wild west out there. <laughs> I'm hanging on by a thread, but we're going to see. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, thank you everyone for watching and hanging out. That's it for tonight. If you have any questions or want to continue any discussions, be sure to join my Facebook group, Kitty Cat Go Adventure Team. Um, and also mark your calendars for the next episode of Kitty Cat Go Live will be Wednesday, March 8th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be chatting with Britt Kashiak of the Cast Pack. She and her husband camp with their three dogs and two cats. Love so that. she's going to... Yeah, so she's going to share all of her cat camping tips and also tips on adventuring with dogs and cats together. Um, and also be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button if you're watching on Facebook so you can keep up with future episodes and happenings. Um, thanks again for hanging out with us tonight. I thanks, hope you learned guys. something and had some fun. Happy adventuring. <laughs>